Hey guys, it's JC. Welcome back to our channel, All Things Home. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you some DIY vases. If you enjoy watching, please go ahead and like this video below and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our next one. I've had a couple vases just lying around kind of being unused just because they don't really go with our home anymore. Our style has kind of evolved a little bit. But instead of getting rid of them, I really wanted to DIY them and give them a more natural aged look. So that is the process that I will be showing you today. This first one I'm going to go through is an aluminum vase that I already had. We kind of had some aluminum decor when we first moved in and started decorating, but have kind of moved away from that a little bit more. But I kept this vase because I like the shape of it. I originally tried to paint it white just to see what that would kind of do and obviously didn't love it. So I wanted to add a little bit more texture and give it a little bit of a stone look. This photo was the inspiration I found for this vase because mine had similar flutes to it, not identical, but that was kind of the look I was going for so that I didn't have to try and hide those. I wanted this one to be more of a tan neutral color, so I started mixing white and a dark brown, and then to add texture, I added in some baking soda. This first try was still a little bit too watery and didn't have much thickness to it, so I ended up going back and adding in some more baking soda. So you can just kind of add slowly until you get the texture that you want. Mine ended up being pretty muddy, which is kind of what I wanted because I really wanted to add some thickness and texture to this vase so that it would have more of a natural texture to it. I did go ahead and add in a little bit more brown because the color was a little too pink for me. So I just added that in and then continued to just kind of brush the mixture on. I really didn't have a method to this. I can say that with a lot of my DIYs, I don't get caught up in perfection because the majority of the time, the imperfection is what gives it the natural feel or the character to it. Whenever I show my husband a DIY project I did and show him where I messed up, he always just responds and says, it adds character. So I just remember that the imperfections are what bring out the beauty in these projects. So now I'm just showing you a little bit of what the texture looks like. You can see that there's a little bit of texture to it. And when I spin it around, you can see the area that didn't have as much baking soda in the mix. This is all about layering. So I'm just going to go back and mix up a little bit more and just continue to add to the vase. I started using this putty knife because my brush was getting a little bit thick just with the mixture in it and I think just using different tools to apply the paint it will just give you some added texture and depth to it. You can see that the thickness and texture is building on it and I'm finally liking how it's looking. Now I just want to focus on the top a little bit more and hide the details a little bit and make everything blend a little bit more. I'm also going to add some mixture inside so that when you can see a little bit of the inside after you put the greenery in, it won't be obvious that the base is aluminum. So again, just trying to hide those precise details like the rim at the top and where the handles attach, just trying to blend everything in so that it looks more like stone and not its original aluminum material. I was not afraid of using my hands to see if that would help at all. I still ended up going back with the putty knife just because I think that helped blend and smooth everything out a little bit better. So now you can really see the added texture to it and like I said I'm just trying to hide where these handles attach. One thing I wish is that I couldn't totally figure out how to thicken these handles. I think that would have really help the overall look. So if you have any ideas on how to get these handles a little bit thicker, let me know in the comments. I'm open to ideas. After letting that dry overnight, I'm now going to go back in with a white and dark brown, the two colors that I used to make this tan color. I'm going to start with the white and just brush it in between each flute. I still went ahead and added baking soda to the white paint just to keep the texture going. Don't be afraid if you end up adding and brushing on too much of the paint because, like I said, this is all about layering, so we're still going to go back with different colors. We're just giving it a little bit more depth. I also went ahead and lightly brushed the paint over the rest of the vase on the top and the bottom and the handles, just again to give it that added depth. So here is an update on the texture. We are really building now, and like I keep saying, just adding a little bit more depth 
to making it look a little bit more aged and natural. Now I'm going to go in with the dark brown on the raised part of the flutes. I didn't want to overdo this, but knew that if it was a little bit too dark, I could go back in with a lighter color. Remember, these are DIY projects, so you can make your own rules if you need to. I also did the same thing that I did with the white and went ahead and brushed the dark brown just a little bit on the top and bottoms and on the handles. Now, like I said, I just went back over with the tan color over the places that I just kind of went a little bit overboard on the dark brown. I didn't fully cover it, but just made the tan the dominant color so the dark brown didn't completely stand out. For the final step, I just barely dipped my brush into the tan color and went over the white areas very lightly just so that they weren't so stark. So here is how it turned out. I love how this one ended up turning out. I love the color and the texture that it has and I'm excited to find a permanent home for this piece. So moving on to this next vase, I got it from a floral arrangement that I was gifted and I loved that it was square. I was honestly planning on just doing a DIY with the shape that it is. However, I found this inspiration and I just loved this vase and tried to think of ways of how I could mimic it with this vase but was second guessing until I saw this photo from Jenna Pierce and decided that I had to figure it out. So this is what I came up with. Of course, this is not for a real floral plant because this is cardboard, so obviously it won't do well with water, but I knew that I could just use some faux greenery and florals, so this was my easiest and most affordable solution. Now, getting back to the process, I went ahead and made an X on the cardboard just to find the center a little bit better. And now I'm using just some Gorilla Glue to glue the cardboard to the glass. Now, you want to make sure that you use enough of it and you want to leave this set overnight. I did not and mine ended up coming off and so I had to eventually re-glue it and leave it overnight. Place a heavier object on top as well just to make sure that it's really secure. Now I'm just taking a toilet paper roll and cutting it to the height that I want and then whoops I'm going to just use hot glue to secure it on top. The sturdier the cylinder the better it will be. It might be a little bit harder to cut but you can always try to use a serrated knife as well. I'm doing a second coat on the outer edge as well just to secure it as much as possible. Okay, now for the fun part. I'm going in with this Drydex spackle to create the texture on this one. The last one I used the paint and baking soda and this one I'm just starting with spackle. Looking back, I think I went in with a thicker coat than needed. You can definitely start with a thinner coat and then build up from there, but I just wanted to make sure that I had full coverage, and since this was obviously very smooth, I wanted to make sure that I was adding enough texture. Since I was going for more of a cement look, I wanted to make sure that the strokes were all in the same direction, so I just kept them going horizontal on the sides of the vase. Now the top was a little bit different. I first just got the spackle on and then started doing the strokes in different ways, seeing what I thought looked best, and I ended up positioning them going up towards the cylinder spout. I wanted to make sure that this was completely covered so that there was no cardboard showing through. So again, just used my hands as needed and then used the putty knife to get the right texture. Once I was done for the most part, I went back where the cardboard was glued onto the glass and made sure that seam was covered. So this is how I finished with it and let it dry. If you have used this before, you know that it goes on pink and you will know it's dry when it turns white. When I saw this in the morning, I was honestly so excited because it was very sturdy and I already thought the texture looked so pretty on it and I wanted to show you a little bit up close of how this texture turned out. Before painting, I went ahead and just grabbed a medium sand block and just sanded off any of those super rough areas. 
Spackle can be a little bit dusty, so just making sure you don't have any loose pieces that can kind of get caught on something will help everything to stay intact. Now I'm just going in with a base paint. I had this paint left over from a different project and honestly I ended up not having to do this step but I still wanted to take you through the process and show you why. I was very tempted to leave it this color once I painted it because I thought this color was really pretty and could just have been left alone with the neutral color that it was. However, I had this inspiration in mind and wanted to stick to it. I chose black because I'm planning to put this on my coffee table and I decided it would be a good contrast for that area. Now I'm going to go all over with the black and on this step you'll see why I didn't need to do that first color. Because this vase has a lot of texture, the contrast between the two colors was just too much. So I would recommend going in with a darker base color or just using the black from the very beginning. I was originally thinking that the color would pop through a little bit in the lightly brushed areas, but with the texture it's just easier to add this smoky or foggy look at the end. At this point, I was really thinking that I should have left it the lighter color, but when you have a vision, trust it and keep going with it. I knew that I could always repaint it if needed. At this point, I grabbed the darker brown and started adding it in in sweeping motions. This wasn't the solution, but I knew it needed another color and the darker brown and black were definitely less of a contrast. So as you may have guessed, I wanted to completely cover up the lighter color, so I grabbed my brush and started dabbing in all those areas and just trying to cover all of those lighter areas up. I did use both the black and the brown at this point just to give it a little bit more dimension. I was dabbing in the areas that I was trying to cover but made sure to go back in sweeping motions to get the final look I wanted. I did go back with a sand block and just sand it a little bit to give it that dusty look and this is how it turned out. I still think the lighter color would have turned out really pretty, but I'm so happy I continued with the black because I think on the coffee table it just needed that little bit of contrast. That wraps up this video on these DIY vases. We hope this inspired you to try some DIYs at home and help bring a little bit more cohesiveness to your home decor. If you enjoyed watching, don't forget to like this video below and subscribe to our channel for more budget-friendly home decor and design tips and DIY projects. See ya!